Minecraft Dungeons is widely considered to be the most successful Minecraft spin-off. With over 25 million players and a widely positive reception, Minecraft Dungeons was set to be big. After the game had a very successful update reviving interest in it in October 2022, players were optimistic about its future, but suddenly out of the blue, after almost a year of radio silence from developers, they would find that the game had been abandoned. What went wrong with Minecraft Dungeons? Why did it lose popularity so fast? And why was it ultimately abandoned so suddenly by Mojang? Minecraft Dungeons, released in May 2020, is Minecraft's take on the dungeon crawler genre. Basically, you play as a character and complete various dungeons and missions, fighting off mobs, clearing objectives, gathering different weapons and abilities known as artifacts, all while leveling up, enchanting your gear to make it stronger, and finding items of rarer qualities. Now, unlike its failed counterpart, Minecraft Legends, of which I also made a video about here, Minecraft Dungeons was very positively received. It it has great Steam reviews, and players generally state that they enjoyed the game. It's intuitive as well as easy to learn and understand. Its main combat loop is decently entertaining. The graphics and visual design of the various environments you enter are quite nice, and while the game is relatively simple compared to games of similar genres, it still manages to be quite enjoyable. You can also play with friends, of course making it even more fun. The game's core adventure is split into three sections. The mainland, which is what you get with the base game, costing about 20 US dollars, featuring the main story, and then six other DLCs in other realms and dimensions, which added a variety of specifically themed levels and special items as we'll get into later. Furthermore, upon beating the main game, you unlock Adventure Difficulty, which comes with new enchantments and a new level, and beating the game again on Adventure Difficulty will unlock the game's third and hardest difficulty, Apocalypse Difficulty. Within each of these difficulties also exists levels or tiers which multiply the difficulty of enemies, dropping a higher power level of items as well. But this is where the game's main issues begin to show. It takes about 4 to 6 hours to beat the main game on the default difficulty, not that long overall. And that's really all players who play the game do, as the harder difficulties are practically the same game again, with just a few different items. $20 for a game which only provides 4 to 6 hours worth of content for most players isn't really the best deal, even if the gameplay is decent. In fact, the game is so short that most Dungeons players will recommend you buy the more expensive Ultimate Edition for $40, which comes with the DLCs included. But the game obviously didn't have the DLCs upon release. In fact, its first DLC wouldn't come until two months later, so players who initially bought the game and beat it within a few days were left with not much to do. This was a pretty common complaint in the game's early days, when no other content was available, and likely led to many players dropping the game pretty early because there simply wasn't anything else to do besides replay it on a harder difficulty. And even players who really enjoyed the game, replaying it on harder difficulties would eventually get bored of doing the same thing over and over. There wasn't really an end game, you would just play the same increasingly difficult missions again. Google Trends reflects this issue, as you can see that not long after release, the game had nosedived in popularity. Popularity. It needed something fresh to bring players back. Two months after Dungeons had released in July of 2020, the first DLC, Jungle Awakens, was added to the game, containing new missions and items, and ever since, there were new DLCs released roughly every two to three months up until July of 2021, a bit over a year after the game first launched. The DLCs weren't free, and if you were a player who bought the game when it first released, you would have to keep buying them every time you one released to play new content. And while the DLCs were solid and helped current players stay engaged with the new content they offered, for the majority of players who got the game upon release, beat it once then dropped it, seeing that they would have to buy new content probably wasn't convincing enough to get them to return. No matter how good the content is, if there's a paywall, it's simply going to be harder to get players to engage with it. Anyways, the six DLCs drop and it is now December 2021. The game had lost quite a lot of popularity since its release in May of 2020. The DLCs didn't really do much in regards to attracting new players and attention to the game, and so Mojang announced that they would be shifting to a seasonal update model instead. Dead. On December the 14th, 2021, the first of the Minecraft Dungeon seasons would release, known as Cloudy Climb. This was the first attempt to resolve the game's main issue, that being its boring, repetitive, extremely luck-based, and grindy endgame. 
Announced during Minecraft Live 2021, Cloudy Climb would add a variety of features, but notably two things. A new game mode called The Tower, as well as an Adventure Pass, effectively a battle pass that would reward players with a variety of exclusive cosmetics. Now, to remind you, the core issues with the game up to this point was the lack of endgame content to keep players engaged, and the fact that progression and replaying the game on harder difficulties was kind of boring. The tower was meant to be that solution to the end game issue, and the battle pass was supposed to be a way of engaging the more casual mainstream players, giving them something additional to work towards and play for. So, you can imagine that the Minecraft Dungeons player base was really hoping this update would be good enough to renew interest in a dying game. It was going to be an important update, that was for sure, and unfortunately what the players wanted didn't quite happen. After Cloudy Climb released, things weren't looking good. Over 70% of the people who watched the Mr. Epic's videos were still not subscribed. They need to change that clearly, no pressure. They should also check out his Patreon where they can get exclusive content, world downloads, plugins, and much more content never before released to the public. Anyways, one of Minecraft Dungeon's biggest YouTubers, 4AM, would upload a video around this time discussing what much of the community was extremely disappointed about. I want to start off this video by saying, I'm sorry guys. I apologize for hyping everyone in the past months for this big update because I think it is simply not fun. I apologize for stealing your time. I mean, I feel like I stole your time by hyping up this update, by sharing my speculative take on it, what the rewards were going to be like, how epic this was going to be for the endgame players who were stuck kind of with no new content. I sincerely hoped that this update was going to fix that problem, but it simply didn't. We'll start with the tower. The tower was basically a selection of about 30 floors, of which contained a variety of mobs and bosses of increasing difficulty. At the end of every floor, players can pick one of five pieces of gear or can get an extra enchantment point. Upon beating the tower or dying, you'd also get one high level item to keep. Now here were the issues with the tower. First of all, when you entered the tower, you couldn't actually bring any of your own items you'd earned and grinded for up to that point in with you. You could only play with items you gathered from the tower. And the items you could get inside the tower after beating every floor couldn't be brought outside of the tower. So all the items players had grinded for outside of the tower up to that point were useless, and all the items players got in the tower were also useless as they couldn't be used elsewhere. Well besides one item, which surely would be a good thing right? When you beat the tower or die, you got to pick one of three items to bring outside of the tower with you, that was all. The items being better, the further you got in the tower. I was told by Sayonaya, a player who has been active in the community and playing since day one, who also provided me with a lot of information for this video, that the rewards for beating the tower were really good for the time spent playing it, so much so that almost all other methods players had of getting strong gear were now considered a waste of time. Each tower run would take 20 to 40 minutes, and the five items you got to choose from every floor were also always the same, meaning there wasn't much replayability to the towers either. The tower layouts would change every few weeks, but overall, they got boring really fast. Ironically, the towers solved nothing, and somehow only made the game worse, as they made older content obsolete and made players feel everything they had grinded for up to that point was useless. Players were not happy. Oh, and even funnier, when the tower first released, it was single player only, which many people were disappointed about, but also required you to play it online, meaning you couldn't play it without internet, despite it not involving any other players. The battle pass also wasn't receiving applause either. A lot of the free rewards weren't that good or useful, especially to players who had been playing the game for a while. The paid version wasn't bad, the cosmetics and demos were fine, but it was very grindy and didn't really do much to keep players entertained, especially those who were already well into the late game. The challenges were also very boring and only served to make the game even more monotonous. Let's say you are stupid enough, sorry if I put it this way, but if you're stupid enough to fall for this and go for another 12 months of adventure passes, you will lose another 48 dollars or euros to this game, that's almost 50 euros, you can buy so many things with that. The update had failed to renew interest in the game, failed to keep dedicated players invested and wanting to play more, but arguably worst of all, this update only made the game worse. Understandably, the community wasn't very happy, and after the release of Cloudy Climb, became quite toxic towards developers. Up to this point, the developers had been somewhat active in the Minecraft Dungeons official Discord, looking to get players' opinions, which was good, although they rarely made use of anything the community suggested on the feedback site. But in general, community opinion of developers was pretty positive, well up until the release of Cloudy Climb. After Cloudy Climb's failure, the developers announced they would be doing a Q&A in the Discord. Players 
players were excited to finally air their frustrations to the devs and hopefully receive some answers as to what was going on. But unfortunately, the Q&A was not a live Q&A, but rather a podcast type event where the developers answered questions prepared beforehand. Now, in the past, the developers had done live Q&As where they responded to questions directly from the community, which is what players were once again expecting. Obviously, players were extremely upset and disappointed, and it was around this time that many players began turning on the developers, becoming quite hostile towards them. Players even point that out in the Discord specifically. Over time, communication between developers and players only got worse and worse, further fueling players' dislike of them, players only becoming more and more toxic towards them. In the meantime, the game was not getting any more popular, only further declining in popularity. In April of 2022, about five months after the release of Cloudy Climb, Luminous Night Season 2 would release. It brought a new battle pass and cosmetics, one new boss and some new features, but mostly contained bug fixes. The update wasn't bad, but it was just very much lacking in content, especially when compared to the DLCs it was supposed to be replacing. This made players very concerned for the new seasonal update model and the future of dungeons, as they now saw that the updates the game would be getting were clearly going to be quite minor, not nearly enough to renew interest in the game. There was a small anniversary event a month later, but then that was it for a while. Then, in June of 2022, Minecraft Legends would be announced, Minecraft's take on a real-time strategy type game. Minecraft Dungeons players immediately panicked, believing the small content updates and decreasing communication meant that Minecraft Dungeons might be nearing its end and Legends would take priority. Developers reassured players that Dungeons would still be around though and it was a separate development team from Legends, but you can't blame them for feeling concerned with the state the game had been in the past few months. More months than passed, no word about future Dungeons updates or content besides the community manager reassuring players it was being worked on. During this time, it became a running joke in the Discord to announce the daily Dungeons news, of which there was almost none every day. Finally, October the 4th, 2022, a Halloween event, a few new skins, not much overall, but most importantly, a reminder to the community that Minecraft Dungeons was still being updated. Finally, after six months of patiently waiting, Season 3 The Fawn Affair would be announced and it turned the game around. Season 3, The Fawn Affair, released in October 2022, was the developer's response to the almost year-long depression the community had entered. The community felt their feedback had actually been listened to with this update, with many of the balance changes they suggested actually seeing implementation into the game. Besides balance changes, there was also an abundance of new content. There were new cosmetics and pets included with the new battle pass. The tower now had multiplayer mode and had a bigger focus on collaboration, a new level in missions, but most importantly, a new merchant or NPC known as the Enchant Smith was added, allowing players to re-roll properties on their gear. To give some context, when you get weapons and armor in dungeons, they come with three enchantment slots, and each slot has three different enchantments you can choose from and upgrade whenever you level up. Up to this point, the enchantments on an item could not be changed. It was RNG which ones of the roughly 70 that exist you got. But now with the Enchant Smith, they could be re-rolled, removing a very annoying and grindy RNG mechanic that players had been complaining about for a long time. Time. The Enchant Smith also helped make a game mode called The Ancient Hunts, a game mode where you could earn gold to buy items which was made obsolete by the tower's rewards, relevant again as gold was required to reroll items. This update added new content, improved older content and made the game better to play overall. The developers clearly realized that previous season's lack of content wouldn't be sustainable long term and put a lot of effort into this update and the community's response was very positive. Players were satisfied and happy but most importantly were excited about the newfound direction the game's future had taken. However, in the background, Minecraft Dungeon's popularity didn't really recover. It may have been too late. It's October 2022 now, Season 3 has released to extremely positive reception, and players are enjoying the new content and precedent which had been set for the future of the game. 2023 then came around and players had not heard anything from developers for some time. Understandable, they were probably on holiday break. Players were also more aware that there would probably be larger wait times for future updates since they clearly had more content now. But something was different this time. 
Unlike past instances where there was little updates but still some communication, this time there was a complete and utter radio silence, not a single word from any developer or community manager. As February rolled around, the annual winter event was skipped, which was concerning. In March, the game was made free to play and keep on PlayStation, which did actually give the game its biggest popularity spike since release. That came and went though, and by May of 2023, the game's three year anniversary, with no anniversary event this year either, players were getting more and more worried. It wasn't just that the event was skipped, but the game's anniversary wasn't mentioned or acknowledged anywhere at all. It was also around this time that Minecraft Legends had released and it seemed to be getting all the attention over dungeons overshadowing it. As 2023 continued with absolutely zero information or communication, most of dungeons active players further lost interest, believing that development had stopped or dungeons had been discontinued. But this only left them more confused as the game's last update was still very successful. It was now late September of 2023, almost an entire year since the game's last update, and the last time the developers had really communicated with players. Dungeons was at an all-time low popularity, and that's when the official Minecraft Dungeons Twitter account, after 7 months of inactivity, would tweet this. The adventure began in May 2020. Three years later, we're over 25 million heroes strong. Thank you to the amazing community and everyone that joined this journey. Now this tweet was really out of left field, especially after a year of radio silence, and at first, Dungeons players were excited that something big might be coming. But unfortunately, the article linked in the tweet mentioned that every journey has an end, and Minecraft Dungeons would no longer be receiving updates with this team moving on to other projects. There were no new features or updates planned for the game. Players' reactions were a mix of sadness that the game was discontinued, but many also had a sense of closure that they finally got official word on the game's state after waiting so long. Three years after release, Minecraft Dungeons had officially been abandoned. But why? Why did Mojang abandon dungeons? The game was generally well received and liked, the game's last update turned out great, everything was looking up for dungeons, so why did they seemingly abandon it after one of its most successful updates? Well here's one explanation as to why the game was abandoned. As we talked about, the game had 6 DLCs and these were actually planned to come out from Minecraft Dungeons release. Minecraft Dungeons outlived its initial plans, it wasn't meant to add new content beyond its 6 DLCs, but the developers or some executives decided to extend the game's lifespan, which is why the seasonal update and battle pass model was later implemented. Minecraft Dungeons was a success, in fact it's arguably the most or only successful Minecraft spin-off with over 25 million players having a very positive reception. It's likely the game surpassed the point at which it was considered to be successful monetarily and was no longer making much money or was not meant to be supported beyond a specific point. It was never meant to be a live service game. There are in fact comments from developers confirming a lot of this information, such as mentioning how it did sell very well, especially on the Game Pass. Developer Mark even mentioned here that the game did even more than was planned and wasn't designed to run forever. Apparently Dungeons began as a single player DS game before expanding into what it became and it was never meant to be a long term live service game with regular updates. The developers did not want the game to overstay its welcome, it was always meant to have a final update. This is very interesting interesting information. On one hand, I can understand the community's frustrations. Three years, just over two realistically if you consider when the game's last update was, isn't exactly long support for a game, and most players expected it to be something like Minecraft that continued receiving updates over 10 years after its release. It was never really communicated clearly to the players that there would be so few seasonal updates, and as such, from their point of view, support for the game ended abruptly and too early, making it seem abandoned. But on the other hand, I can commend and respect the developers for not trying to follow the modern day gaming business model of milking players dry until the end of time and deciding that the game would be done at some point. Even the battle passes were generally cheaper than most other games and had no time limit of when they could be completed, meaning the FOMO element so commonly used to exploit players in other games was not present at all in dungeons. But there still are some undeniable issues with ending the game support so abruptly. First of all, there are still lots of bugs and issues in the game. I've been told the Nintendo Switch version runs quite badly and is still not well optimized. 
Furthermore, the game's overarching issue of boring and repetitive gameplay will now only forever be left unresolved, as no new content will be added. There still isn't really an endgame, and now never will be. There is no modding support either. Modding is very difficult in dungeons. As we all know, especially for older games no longer being updated, community or user-generated content is what keeps these old games alive, but this is not supported well in dungeons at all, hurting the game's longevity immensely. So, as it remains today, Minecraft Dungeons is in sort of a limbo state, with no future, and is basically doomed to slowly die at this point. At the very least, it could have ended with greater mod and user-generated content support. Ironically, despite being abandoned, Dungeons still maintained more active players than Legends before it was no longer being updated as well. Huge shout out to Cyanaya and Pancake Cat for giving me lots of insights into Minecraft Dungeons and its community for this video. Be sure to check out my Patreon for exclusive content, and be sure to subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching.